In our previous video, we made a simplified factory method where we prompt the user with a drop-down box and say, choose a car to create. Now, let me uh, run back here. And what we're going to see is that this user's choice is going to go into this variable called selected car. We've predefined the choices here on line 48. But in theory, those choices could come from a file, from the internet, from anywhere. It's not necessarily a static list. So we prompt the user, as we just saw. We take the string that the user selected, save it into this variable, and then we pass that string down to our factory method called create vehicle. But there's one little flaw here that's possible. We're assuming that the only options the user will see are Neon, Cavalier, and Prius. And if it's anything else, it is going to say unrecognized car, throw an exception, and that exception will stop the program. Now, uh, that's okay as we have it designed now, but the trick is, what if I added maybe a fourth choice to this? What if I said Tacoma? And I won't actually do this at the moment, but just what if? What if I added Tacoma? And again, let's pretend that this source of the data might not be hard-coded in the program, but maybe we're reading it from an online feed, and that's entirely possible. Well, is there a way that we can make this method without, being, without having a huge if test and without being so dependent on what the user has passed in, knowing that it came from a predefined list of options? In other words, what string's getting passed in here? Well, the string getting passed in is either going to be Prius, Cavalier, or Neon. And it just happens to match these class names exactly, Neon, Cavalier, and Prius. Okay, so what about this? Instead of calling a constructor like I've done here, wouldn't it be, a, be nice if we could take a string that represents the class and pass it to a method? The method interprets that string, is able to map that string to the actual concrete class and then create an object of that class. And indeed, there is a way to do that. So uh, what we're going to do is say class dot for name, and then we'll put a string in here, and then dot new instance. This is a way of constructing an object by passing a string, and that string represents the class name but specifically it represents the fully qualified class name. The fully qualified class name means the package that we're in plus the name of the class itself. So package vehicles, class neon, package vehicles, class cavalier, package vehicles, class Prius. You see for each one of these, the package name is the same. So that's gonna make things a little bit easier. So I'm gonna say class.forname vehicles, and it is case sensitive, and then I'm going to say plus selected car dot two string. Now that's really interesting because remember that selected car is going to be Neon Cavalier or Prius, which uh, is a string that the user has chosen from the drop down box, but it just happens to match these class names. So when we take the name vehicles, which is the package name, and we add it to Neon Cavalier or Prius, it's enough information to uniquely identify each of these classes and make an object out of it. Now what I can do is I can say return class.forName and I do need to add a cast here, return vehicle. I'll explain that in just a moment. Class.forName, okay. As soon as I do that, take a look at this. I can get rid of the rest of this method because this will handle all of our cases now. We don't need an if test. You see that makes that method very simple. Let's go ahead and try it out. Uh, okay, I'm going to run it in the debugger. And as a matter of fact, I, while this is how I would normally do it, I would normally do it in one line, I'm going to split this into multiple lines so that we can watch each line run in the debugger. So I'll say string fully qualified class name equals boom. Class.forName fully qualified class name. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to split this if and off into one more method, vehicle, or one more line, my vehicle equals vehicle, like so, and then finally return my vehicle, like so. That way we can walk through this a little bit easier. Now, by the way, why the cast? Okay, casting, I, th I think I talked about, no, I haven't talked about casting before, except for numeric ties. 
Casting essentially means we're going from a very general type to a more specific type. Because class.forName can create an object out of anything, we have to tell it that we're actually creating something that is either a vehicle or a subclass of vehicle. And that's what this cast is for. We, we require that cast because remember our return type is also vehicle. So we have to return a, an object of type vehicle. Okay, let's save. And I'll snap a breakpoint here. And let's go ahead and debug our program and watch it work. So uh, right click on driver and choose debug. Okay. And we know our magic, we're going to do our F8. Okay. Prompt the user to select a vehicle, and I typically have to minimize to get this one. So let's go ahead and choose Prius again and choose OK. OK, and now we're going to continue to F8. Uh, actually, this one we're going to F7 so we can step into our factory method. F7, what's the fully qualified class name? Let me mouse over that. Ooh, you know what? I'm glad I debugged because I just realized I forgot something there should be a period between vehicles and Prius. So let's, let me add that period, and we'll try one more time. And save, and I'll go ahead and terminate the program. There we go. And we will debug one more time. Okay, so uh, F8. Okay, F8, F8. Now we know we have to minimize. Oh, there we go, we got it. And we're gonna save Prius, okay. And F7, okay. Fully qualified class name, F8. What's the fully qualified class name? Vehicles.Prius, which is enough to uniquely identify our Prius. Okay, now here's the real test. What happens here? Take a careful look at this line where the green line is right now, line 121, and ask yourself what's going to be stored in that variable called my vehicle after I choose F8. Okay, it ran, which is really good news. Uh, if we happen to make a syntax error, it's very possible that this would throw an exception, but it ran. Take a look when I mouse over my vehicle. You see it's vehicles.prius. And again, if we go to the variables tab and we go to my vehicle, we're going to see that it is a vehicle of type Prius, not a Cavalier, not a Neon, but a Prius. At this point, I can resume the program. So I'll just say continue and we'll go ahead and let it run for a bit. So gallons of gas, 10 miles per gallon, we'll say 50. Uh, odometer, we'll say 10,000. Do you want to create another vehicle? We'll say no. Uh, distance to travel 100. Uh, reimbursement rate 44. No more trips. Okay, and I'm going to run back to the uh, uh, console, and what you're going to see, take a look at this line I'm highlighting, in Prius, running in internal combustion mode. That line is only available in the Prius's go method. So we have confirmed that this method, which is only in Prius, is getting called. And that defines the success criteria of our factory method, because we know that our factory method, even at three lines, although it could very easily be one line, we know that our factory method is creating a Prius, not a Cavalier or a Neon. So this is the very useful class.forName concept in Java. Uh, this can be used to get rid of if test, which is a, a big goal for object-oriented programming. The fewer if tests you have, uh, the more object-oriented, the better designed your program is, which is a lot of good. And you know that we did spread it out into three lines, but essentially that took what was a about a, a 10 line method and reduced it all the way down to one. The more we can get out of the smaller code base, the better. In other words, less code doing more stuff is always better than more code doing less stuff because it's less we have to test. It's less that uh, it's less we have to maintain and support. So that is a look at class.forName. In our next video, we're going to take a deeper look at casting. Thank you.